Hello, welcome to today's lesson. It is on chemical structure of nucleic acids and DNA. So kicking off unit four, the purpose of today's lesson is to recall the structure of DNA, that's nucleotides, how they pair with each other, as well as where DNA is found in eukaryotic cells and in prokaryotes. So let's get into it. This is from 7.1 of your textbook and it is on the chemical structure of nucleic acids. Most likely you know about RNA and DNA already, but let's talk for a moment on what they do before we get into the structure of anything. So the biggest job of DNA and RNA is making proteins. Proteins are what make us up. So when you look at me, you are looking at all the proteins that make me up. So where are the directions to make those proteins? Well, they are found in the DNA. And how do they get to the proteins? Well, they are shuttled around by RNA. It's more of the working type. So the first job of DNA and RNA is making proteins. The next job they have is making our genes. And that is what we pass on to our next generation. So you are a combination of your mother and your father. Half of your genetic material you received from each. And all life on the planet has DNA, every generation and every living organism. But what is DNA actually made up of? Well, nucleotides. And a nucleotide is made up of three parts. We have this phosphate group with a phosphorus in the middle surrounded by oxygen molecules on the outside. They are very famous in biology. They make up the phospholipid bilayer that makes the double membrane of a cell. Uh, and also they make up ATP, which is the energy for all life. We then have this sugar group and it is a pentose sugar, meaning five carbon. And it is different in DNA and RNA. In DNA, it is a deoxyribose sugar, meaning it has one less oxygen compared to RNA, which is a ribose sugar. Then we have this nitrogenous base, and it is nitrogenous because it is made up of a lot of nitrogen. And each different uh, nucleotide has a different base. In DNA, we have four different bases. They are DNA on the left here, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. But in RNA, instead of thymine, it is replaced by uracil, which is very similar in structure. Going back to the nucleotide and the bases, there are two categories which we can separate those four different bases into uh, when talking about DNA. We have purines, which is adenine and guanine, or we can just say A and G. And then we have pyrimidines, which is thymine and cytosine. Purines are much larger than pyrimidines. And this difference in size and shape is really important when it comes to how in DNA, these different bases actually pair with each other. And maybe you have heard about this before. You may know that G joins to C and A joins to T. There is this complementary base pairing that goes on. So DNA is a more stable structure than RNA. It has hydrogen bonds that join these nucleotide bases together, forming this double helix. The backbone of DNA and RNA is also made up of the nucleotides and it's where the sugar and the phosphate groups just join to each other. So we have a sugar joined to a phosphate, joined to a sugar to a phosphate. Uh, and the way they are joined is through covalent bonds and they are extremely strong bonds as you wouldn't want your DNA falling apart. So we have hydrogen bonds joining the nucleotides and these covalent bonds creating the sugar phosphate backbone of DNA and RNA. 
So chemical structure of DNA. If we bring up this diagram here, we have DNA on the right and RNA on the left. Let's talk about the differences between the two. We've said one already where RNA has uracil, but in DNA, it is thymine. Similar in structure and in function, but what else? Well, DNA is found in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. RNA is found everywhere else that we need it, such as floating freely in the cytosol, that is the liquid within cells, in prokaryotes. Prokaryotes are a more simple, less complex form of cell compared to the eukaryote. In eukaryotes, DNA is present in chromosomes. They are these linear pairs that arise through sexual reproduction, and that's where you get half your genetic material from your mom and the other half from your dad. DNA is also found in the mitochondria and chloroplasts of eukaryotic cells. And this discovery led scientists to believe in the endosymbiotic theory you can read briefly about in your textbook, but it just essentially states the worldview of how eukaryotic cells came to be, where a simple cell with a membrane was engulfed by another cell with a membrane, creating the eukaryotic cell, which has a double membrane. BBC states that if you stretched the DNA in one cell out all the way, it would be about two meters long. And if we have about 37 trillion cells, a trillion is a million million cells in our body. Well, that's a lot of DNA. And they say if you stretched out all the DNA in your body, it would be twice the diameter of the solar system. So there is a lot of genetic information within each one of us. So to avoid DNA becoming tangled, the way in which it is organized in cells is by at intervals, DNA is coiled around eight proteins. So this is a single protein, it's called a histone. When we have eight of these together, it is called a histone complex. When DNA is coiled around the histone complex, it is referred to the whole thing as a nucleosome. Before a cell can divide, it needs to replicate its DNA. At this point, this is where there is double the amount of length of DNA in a cell. So these coils become even more closely tied together. And this image shows how DNA coils up uh, to form these nucleosomes. Those nucleosomes then bundle up. When it becomes quite condensed, it's called chromatin. Um, but then when it's fully condensed, it forms this linear feature with two kind of parallel uh, bodies to it called the chromosome. So chromosome is the intensely condensed form of DNA. And the number of chromosomes within a cell depends on what species it is and determines what species it is. You may know that humans have 46 chromosomes. If you are interested in all this, in DNA and RNA, and if you're also into playing video games, I've included a link in the description of this video to a site called Eterna. Uh, it's this video game centered at Stanford University, which allows you to actually build uh, sections of RNA. And they have competitions each week where um, if you win, they will actually build your section in the physical form um, and check it out because it's a bit of fun but it's also a tool this kind of genetic engineering tool that scientists are using to help fight corona so let's get into some questions now this is taken from qcaa and it is a multiple choice the figure is an example of a structure found in dna what is it called? So pause the video here and answer that one. Okay, I hope you've come up with your response. Let's talk it through. So we know what a histone is. That's one of these single proteins. When all eight of them are together, it's called a histone complex. 
we know that a nucleus is kind of the control center of a cell. It's where DNA is contained. Uh, so it's not a nucleus. Chromatin, we said, was this condensed form of DNA before it fully condenses into a chromosome. So therefore, the answer is nucleosome. When DNA is wrapped around this histone complex, the whole thing is called a nucleosome. So another question, this figure below represents a section of DNA. We know it's DNA because it is uh, two sides as opposed to the single stranded RNA. So pause the video here to tell me what does the label I represent? Okay, so let's talk through it again. Well, a nucleotide was what we just spoke about before, and this is clearly something different. We said that covalent bonds are really strong bonds that create up the sugar phosphate backbone of DNA. We said there is another type of bond that holds the nucleotide bases together, and that was a hydrogen bond. So the answer is C, purine molecule. Um, that was one category that two of the bases would fit into, the other was pyrimidine. So this is a short response question worth four marks, and it is asking you to explain two of the differences between DNA found in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. We didn't talk a lot about this, so uh, to answer this question, you may need to do a bit of research, but come up with all right, two differences, so you get one mark for each, but then you also have to explain, so that's how you get your other two marks. Pause the video here. Okay, this is the QCAA response. So they've come up with a couple of thoughts here uh, and the marking scheme, but there's also many other type of responses that you may include. So I will just look at a couple of these. Maybe you said that in eukaryotes, our DNA uh, wraps around proteins called histones. Most prokaryotes do not have histones. Uh, in, in eukaryotes, histones help package DNA into smaller spaces, whereas prokaryotes compress their DNA to fit into smaller spaces through supercoiling. Another response that you might, might have said was prokaryotic DNA is located in the cytosol, whereas DNA is found in chromosomes in the nucleus in eukaryotes. Okay. Let's keep moving on. Here is a quote by this man called Anthony Flew, and he was one of the most prominent scientists for the last 50, 60 years. He just died in 2010, and he was uh, a renowned self-proclaiming atheist. However, he came to the end of his career and his life and came to the conclusion that there has to be a divine being out there. Uh, he said that his pilgrimage of coming to this conclusion was not based on faith, but on reason, which is pretty cool. And he leaves us with this quote, says, how can a universe of mindless matter produce beings with intrinsic ends, self-replicating capabilities, and coded chemistry? There are so many cool quotes out there, and I will leave you with this thought today that as we jump into the world of genetics, uh, it is incredible. So I hope that you are looking forward to it as much as I am. Guys, God bless you. I will see you in class shortly.